What is up guys, Alan Wallace here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about my favorite smartphone apps when it comes to astrophotography. First and foremost, if it's cloudy outside, you're not gonna be photographing the stars. So you're gonna to wanna to check Clear Outside. This is a weather app made for astronomers. It is free, it's made by the guys at First Light Optics and they call it a gift for the community. And you can really tell that it was made for astronomers. So up the top next to the location, you've got the Bortle class of light pollution of the area you're looking at. You've got the sunrise and sunset times, the moonrise and moonset times, as well as the moon phase. You've got the time split up into hours, which is really good. A lot of weather apps do like three hours and normally the time is split into red orange and green depending on how clear the skies are but living in wales it's all red right now <laughs> but i also love how the cloud is split into low cloud medium cloud and high cloud that really gives you a good picture of what the weather is like in the area you've got other useful things like the international space station flyovers and you can tap them and get more information um, and there's also visibility rated out of 10, any fog, rain. You also get the dew point temperature, which you don't get in a lot of weather apps. And it's good to know because if your lens cools down to below the dew point temperature, you're going to start getting fog and mist on the lens. So it's good to know the dew point and the temperature outside, the ambient temperature, so you can expect your lens is going to fog up or not. But I've been using Clear Outside for a number of years now and I can honestly say it's one of the most reliable weather apps that I've used. It's not 100%, but it's definitely one of the more accurate and it, I find it to be far more reliable than most other sources. Now, once you know you've got clear skies, you're gonna to need to know how dark they are. And that's where dark sky map comes in. It's basically a map of light pollution laid over maps and you can zoom in and out. And they've got a very intuitive color system there with search functionality. And you also wanna consider the direction you'll be facing, not just uh, the exact position from which you'll be shooting. Now, of course, street lights are not the only form of light pollution. There's also natural light pollution, the main source being the moon. So before you head out, you want to check the moon phase. Now, I've got this little widget from Phases of the Moon Pro, and it sits on my home screen. You can see it at the top there. And that is a live view of the current phase of the moon. And if I tap that, it brings up more information, the rise times and the set times. And I like that it's just quick and easy to access from my home screen because I, I check the moon quite a lot but if you're on ios you might want to try looking at deluxe moon instead so now that we've got clear dark skies free of moonlight you're going to need to know what's going to be in the night sky and that's where stellarium comes in this is my favorite night sky emulator there are a number of emulators out there but stellarium is, is simply my favorite i just find it easy to use i love the visuals and it, it has everything i need um, so you can put in any date time and location and see what's going to be in the night sky this is right now and you can even scrub through time to see how things are going to move you can see gemini rising there and if i scroll across you can see orion rising so it's good to find out where the planets are gonna be, where the constellations are gonna be, if the Milky Way is out. And there's also a desktop app, which is free. And obviously it looks a lot nicer on the big screen. There's also this really nice red light mode on the app where if you're out and about under the stars, you can make your entire screen red through the app and then turning your brightness down. You're not gonna ruin your biological night vision when you're out and about. It takes your eyes about half an hour to adjust to the dark. If you look at a bright light, you lose that night vision, you have to wait another 30, 40 minutes. So this will help protect your night vision. So it's really nice to just sit under the stars and learn some new constellations and identify some new stars and obviously maintain your night vision. Now, if you really want to get precise with your planning of night sky objects, you're going to want to take a look at photo pills. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about photo pills, but you can do a lot with it. Um, so here we've got the position of the moon rise and the moon set, and you can really get precise uh, with lining these things up uh, and create moon shots like this one here. And in my vlog about Milky Way selfies, you would have seen me use photo pills line up uh, a Milky Way shot with the light out. So this here is South Stack in Anglesey and the red pin is where I'm standing. Selstack Lighthouse is off to the west. Now you've got these circles, concentric circles around the red pin. You have to imagine those are like a dome around you. They basically represent the celestial sphere of stars. And as night falls, you see these white dots appear. And that's basically the Milky Way 
stretching over that dome over your shooting location you can see the the bigger white dots in the bottom left there are the Milky Way core but I wanted to find the time that the Milky Way is going to be behind the lighthouse so I just scrubbed through time and there it is the Milky Way is behind the lighthouse in the west at 3 a.m. and you can go back and get that photograph Now, I'm not going to go into serious detail with Photopills, but I strongly advise if you do download it, go to the Photopills Academy YouTube channel. They've got some really in-depth videos showing you how to use the app because it's not the kind of app you can pick up and just use straight away. You really have to learn how to use it and how stuff works. But it's an incredible app and it keeps getting updated. They've got a new field of view mode now, which I'll be doing a video on soon. So make sure to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that content. So we've looked at working out what's going to be in the night sky for your shoot, but what about the landscape? And Google Earth is a really good application for this. You can scour the world for compositions from the comfort of your armchair. Um, and it's got incredible detail. Not only that, but you've got the geotagged photographs, so you can kind of uh, understand a bit more about the landscape you're going to be going to. And there's even 360 degree um, photo spheres so you can really look around the landscape before you even get there um, and yeah you can just really line up some shots and get an idea of the lay of the land uh, maybe find an interesting viewpoint that you want to get to um, but when you do find an interesting viewpoint you want to get to you're going to need to know how to get there which Google Earth isn't very good for what I much prefer to use is an app called View Ranger uh, this is a hiking app, so it's, it's a map app, but it has good detail in all the hiking trails and public paths and through ViewRanger you can really work out how to get a look to a location. You can see here all of the dotted black hiking trails that wouldn't really be that clear on Google Maps or on Google Earth. And uh, ViewRanger is completely free. The ViewRanger app, the maps are really good. If you want, you can pay for the OS maps. But the, the ViewRanger standard maps, which are free, are pretty damn good. And you can even download them for offline use as well, so you don't have to worry about losing signal when you're out in the field. Now, when you find an interesting composition, whether that's through Google Earth or if you're out and about on a hike, then you want to keep track of it using an app called Google My Maps. The app on the smartphone has quite limited functionality. It's a lot easier and better to use on the desktop, but at the least you can still view the maps that you've created and add new points through the mobile app. Uh, and you can change the icons, change the colors, have whatever kind of system you want. Um, and you can even add reference images and text. So this one, for example, here, a view in the Elan Valley. Um, I've got my reference photo there and any text so I know it's facing south southwest and this way I can just map all of the interesting compositions I found and not lose track of them over time and it just helps keep me really organized now the majority of things in the night sky are very predictable including the man-made stuff so if you want to photograph the international space station you can use the app ISS detector it has a nice list of all the upcoming flyovers and it gives you the magnitude which is how bright the pass is going to be the more negative the brighter it's going to be and you can even click on the pass and it will show you uh, a little view of the sky and how it's going to cross the sky so this one here uh, starts in the west goes over your head and sets off in the east so um, so it's a really nice simple to use app and you can set up notifications so that you get notified before the passes happen just in case you forget but if you want to know about more satellites than just the space station, then you want to get the app Heavens Above. And obviously it itself does the International Space Station as well. Um, but if you look at nightly events, for example, it will show you all the different satellites and when they're going to appear uh, during that night. And you can click on them and get a map of how they're going to pass over the night sky, much like in the ISS detector app as well. Uh, and there's just some really good in-depth knowledge here and a pretty full catalogue 
of all of the satellites and things that are whizzing around up there. And they are my 10 favorite apps when it comes to landscape astrophotography. If I've missed one out, if there's one that you guys think I should have included in this video, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.